What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week 16 and year number three of our San Francisco 49ers franchise, where the 49ers picked up a loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Next up is the Red Hot Green Bay Packers, but first, let's take a look at some highlights from week 16. David Johnson, a monster game. He got things going early there, setting up suck up for a field goal. The Cardinals would take an early 3-0 lead. However, on third down and 13, down the right side of the field, Dimitri Tomlin beat Beating Patrick Peterson on the play, he would put the 49ers on top 7-3 to over the Cardinals. The Cardinals, though, looking to answer here. A little play action. Carson Palmer scanning the field and going for Michael Floyd all the way down to the 19-yard line. And then on first and 10, a great juke by David Johnson. He would take it down to the 6-yard line. However, they would go back after two sacks and eventually settle for a field goal. 6-7 to would be the score. But on first and 10, Peterson getting the ball back for the Cardinals defense there uh, making up for the earlier miscue he had down the right side giving up the big touchdown play uh, the 49ers would get the ball back however Lester Troop would have other plans and take it to the house the 2015 10-5 touchdown for the Cardinals and they would take a 13-7 lead over the 49ers after the miscue there then on second down and four it's going to be Dimitri Todman with the reception the 49ers would get in the field goal range before halftime and we would go into half with a 10 to 13 game the Cardinals would have the lead they would also strike first in the second half behind David Johnson a big run there and then John Brown beating Marcus Gesser on the play down the left side for a touchdown 20 to 10 the Cardinals on top by two possessions now 49ers struggling to get out of this hole as the Cardinals would strike again and it's David Johnson making the play down the right side then on first and goal John Brown for his second touchdown of the day and we have a 27 to 10 ball game the 49ers needing a big play they would get one here by Willie Sneed on the left side. He would take it to the house. 78-yard touchdown for the 49ers, and we have a 27-17 ball game. Willie Sneed would go down with an injury later in this game, though. Definitely something to keep an eye on there. But the 49ers not done there on second down and eight. It's Corey Essex with the reception. He would take it down to the 29. The 49ers would get a field goal out of it, but this makes it a one-possession game. 27-20 would be the score now it is up to the 49ers defense to get a stop they would do that and then the 49ers offense back out onto the field under seven minutes to go second down and 17 over the middle and Christian would get the interception for the Cardinals defense not a good read by Cody Kessler on the play and then the Cardinals gonna add to the lead with a big one here to Patterson putting the juke on him he would take it down to the 33 after a bit they would gain 20 more yards and kick a field goal a minute to go a two possession game 49ers in a hole trying to get out of it another bad decision there by Cody Kessler his fourth interception of the day and that would do it the Cardinals would get a 30 to 20 victory over the 49ers and it does not get easy yet because even though the 49ers have secured the number one uh the division the they still need to fight for that number one seed I don't know that we're going to play our starters for this I think we probably have the number one seed anyway uh, but it is something to keep an eye on. And the Packers are red hot. Aaron Rodgers struggled greatly early in the season. But they are on a winning streak right now. And this is not going to be an easy game. Weird enough, I don't know what happened during the drills, but they went in slow motion. Has anybody ever seen this before? Anyway, we do have some press questions. Oh yeah, Dancer, what's your uh, target for the draft? Or are you just going best player available? I think for the most part, we'll probably go best player available. But there are some things we need. We could probably upgrade the offensive line. I also need a good nickel corner. That's two things we're looking for. But if we see a player that we can't pass up on, we're certainly going to go that direction. The other one is, are you planning on drafting secondary worrying about all your guys becoming free agents at the same time not really but again I do think we need a new nickel guy but we do really like our secondary as of right now Gesser's the one that I'm not thrilled with at the moment but that was just a bad game and the last one overall he has been very good 
For the games of the week, 31 to 28, the Giants with a victory over the Panthers. The Giants now nine and six on the season. The Panthers at seven and eight. And I'm telling you, I really have not seen Cam Newton do much of anything this season. Bruce Allred, the first quarterback off the board, a pretty solid outing there for the Giants. Uh, Cates and Griggs each with two touchdowns, receiving Victor Cruz nine catches, 130 yards. The guy is just not affected by age right now, still getting it done. Keekley would lead the way in tackles with 12, one and a half sacks by Harrison on the day. Interceptions, one by Robinson, one by Dominic rogers Camardi. Fumbles, we have one by Collins. It would not be recovered. 27-21, to 21, the Saints with the victory over the Browns. The Saints now at 6-8-1, the Browns at 6-9. Houston Church, three touchdowns, zero interceptions on the day. Under 200 yards, though. Certainly not what you want to see from him. Um, but I still think this guy is a bright future. I think they need to add some more weapons for him, but otherwise, I think he is going to be a very good player. Danny Shelton with two sacks on the day. Interceptions, none taken place here. Fumbles. And we don't have or we have two fumbles, Roundtree and Hayden. They would each be recovered. 49 to 7. A blowout victory for the Redskins here. And Denton Ritchie did not throw a touchdown. He did throw 200 yards just about. But again, injuries to the Colts quarterback. Andrew Luck has been injured frequently. He goes down again. The Redskins now at 6-7-2. and two. The Colts now at 7-8. and eight. But we're still not seeing Denton Ritchie become the player a lot of people thought he would be. Enrique Milburn, on the other hand, a rookie. With 17 tackles on the day, he won the Heisman, and here he is killing it in the NFL. He won Defensive Player of the Week last week, and with 17 tackles, he's got to be in the conversation again. 27-22, to the Texans with a victory over the Jags. The Texans now at 7-8. and The Jags fall to 10-5. and That's their second loss in a row, though. This is not the time to be struggling to get some victories, especially over teams that they should probably be beating. Uh, Mukamara with 14 tackles on the day. Few sacks, including one by Patrick there. Uh, Jamon Stovall with an interception. He would take it back 10 yards. Fumbles forced, one by Roby. He would recover it. 38-35, to the Falcons with a victory over the Bengals. There was another fumble force, not recovered though. Matt Ryan, nearly 400 yards and five touchdowns on the day. The Falcons now at 6-9 and nine on the season. The Bengals fall to 8-7. and seven. And they've been getting some losses in recent weeks. This is not good if they would like to make the postseason. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, their division very much up for grabs right now. So, I don't know. They did win the Super Bowl two years ago as a wild card team. Maybe they have that same magic left in them, but they got to get these wins. 36 to 14, the Dolphins with a victory over the Lions. The Dolphins now at 12 and 3 on the season. The Lions now at 9 and 6. And again, Drew Brees winning the Super Bowl with the Saints last year, killing it with the Dolphins this year. It'll be interesting to see if he can win back to back Super Bowls with two different teams and different conferences there. Dominic Sue with a sack and a half on the day. Interceptions won by Killebrew. And then fumbles forced and fumbles recovered one by Sue. It would not be recovered. 30 to 24. The Eagles with a victory over the Titans. The Eagles now 7 and 8 on the year. The Titans are now 8 and 7. They did look better earlier in the season. They are getting a few losses now. But this is a team on the rise for sure. They've added great rookies, DeMarco Bullet being one of them. So it's just a matter of putting it all together. But I do think the Titans are on the right track. The Eagles are starting to get their act together a bit more. They did go 7-9 and nine last year. They're 7-8 and eight now. Uh, but they really struggled at the end of last season. Not looking the same this year, though. 21-19, the Chiefs with a victory over the Bills. The Chiefs are now 11-4 on the year. The Bills now at 9-6. So the AFC is very strong at the top. That's very opposite from the NFC. The 49ers are the only team in the NFC with over 10 wins right now. That's pretty crazy to think about. There are a few teams just outside of 10 wins, but right now the 49ers just look to have somewhat of an easy path of course, we did just see us lose to a seven and uh, uh, seven and eight team. So who knows? Anything can happen. But right now, 49ers looking okay. 35 to 14, the Steelers with a victory over the Buccaneers. The Steelers now at eight and seven on the year, and Roethlisberger has returned from injury. That is good news for them. The Buccaneers at six and nine 
on the season. Receiving the ball, Antonio Brown, two touchdowns, 92 yards on the day from him. One thing we haven't seen much of is the other young uh, receiver there. We've seen Terrell Terrell a lot this season, but we have not seen Parker Fenner, who was very good for them last season. I wonder if he is injured right now, but not having the same impact at all. 28-7, the Broncos with a victory over the Raiders. So the Broncos also at 12-3, tied for the best record in the NFL with the 49ers and the Dolphins. The Raiders at 5-10 on the season. Raiders really looked like a team on the rise. They went 8-7-1 and seven and one last season, but not getting it done this year. And it looks like they are probably going to miss the playoffs here. And uh, I, I certainly don't think they anticipated that coming into this season. I said it looks like they're going to. They're definitely missing the playoffs this year with a 5-10 and 10 record. Two interceptions. Chambers, the young cornerback, getting one. Akeem Tlaib would get the other. And then Felix forcing two fumbles on the day. 45-24, to the Chargers with a victory over the Ravens. The Chargers now at 5-10 on the season. The Ravens fall to 2-13. and Once again, it's another solid outing by Joe Flacco. It's just not enough. I think the Ravens just desperately need to rebuild this defense right now because they are struggling. The offense is putting up some points. Maybe not as outstanding as they should be, but the offense, you know, Joe Flacco is still doing okay for them. Uh, defensively, they're not getting it done, though. C.J. Mosley is there, but not getting a lot of help from other players from what we have seen. Jimmy Smith did get an interception in this game. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Perryman would recover one. 24-17, the Rams with a victory over the Seahawks. The Rams now at 5-10 on the year. The Seahawks now at 9-6. So the Seahawks are actually tied for the best record in the entire, uh, second best record in the entire NFC right now at 9 and 6. So it definitely looks like they are going to be a wild card team cuz they're not winning the division with the 49ers ahead of them right now. Um but definitely a team that's been doing well outside of a loss here to the Rams who have kind of struggled this season, you know? Not where they wanted to be. 52 to 18, the Patriots with a big victory over the Chicago Bears here. James Vallejo, three touchdowns, one interception on the day. The Patriots are now 8 and 7. The Bears are now 8 and 7. Uh, Patriots not where they want to be though they are in danger of missing the playoffs they could certainly qualify for the wild card though but they are going to have to finish strong because that is a very tough conference this season and uh, they have not won their division yet so they're not guaranteed anything getting a wild card spot might be much more difficult than in other years this time 24 to 10 the Packers with the victory the Packers now 8 and 7 the Cowboys now 6 8 and 1 and we talked about it Packers are red hot right now Aaron Rodgers one player of the week last week looks like he might win it this week too with another solid outing of obviously Matt Ryan had five touchdowns so who knows uh, I would probably give it to Matt Ryan but right now the Packers are a team on the rise the thing is the 49ers don't really need a victory we might go ahead and sit Cody Kessler in this one and see what we're getting from Austin Schobel after Cody Kessler struggled in this previous game, it's something to consider, but a lot of our starters could be rested at this point. 24-11, to the Vikings with a victory of the Jets. The Vikings now at 9-6. The Jets are now at 0-15 on the season. Not good news for Jets fans. They are going to get the number one pick in the draft, but they are definitely struggling at this point in time, and they are of a lot of pieces away from really turning this this around. They do need a franchise quarterback. We'll see if there's one there in the draft for them, but if there's not a true franchise guy, are they going to reach for one or draft the best player available? That's what we'll have to wait and see, but not where they want it to be at all there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the players of the week. Matt Ryan, 27-42, 396 yards, five passing touchdowns. Kendricks, eight tackles, a sack, and an interception. Roethlisberger, 26-33, four touchdowns for him returning from injury. And then Enrique Milburn for the second straight week, the Heisman winner. Rookie middle linebacker going to win defensive player of the week for the AFC. Going to look at some offensive line guys right now. Barry Tolliver, supposed to go in the seventh round. Looks very solid for a seventh round pick. Uh, not as much for Taylor Leonhard here. Impact block is just not very good. Frank Burr impact block leaves something to be desired, but worth keeping an eye on. I'd probably go the other way, though, with the seventh round guy. At right tackle, pass block not going to cut it for Rasby. 
Uh, same with McBean. Their first two skills both looked solid, but after that, third trait leaving a lot to be desired. Let's take a look at the Packers. Aaron Rodgers, 97 overall. Again, he struggled early in the season, but has really come on strong towards the end. He is back in rhythm, and this is a team to be feared in the postseason right now. Uh, we are playing him in Week 17. Again, it's somewhat of a meaningless game for us. Not a whole lot on the line. We are probably going to rest some players against them, but... If this team makes the postseason, they worry me because our team has struggled against certain quarterbacks and Aaron Rodgers would most certainly pick our defense apart. It'll be interesting to see how they play this upcoming week because this could be a matchup as our first game potentially in the divisional round. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, their defense does leave something to be desired for them, but when you have an offense as good as theirs, it's not as big of a concern, but with our offense doing a great job putting points on the board, certainly something we can be okay about, feel somewhat comfortable about that matchup, but it's still going to be a tough game. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but after losing Willie Sneed to injury last week, we definitely got to be a little bit more careful. That is going to be it for this episode, though. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did, and I'll see you guys in week 17 as we take on the Green Bay Packers. Later.